Welcome back, Zero K fans. I really didn't actually have a proper intermission graphic, but yeah. We're back, and we're going to be watching Starman's Failment vs. Cubay and Eternal Rookie. It's going to be on, of course, Conquest of Paradise, first map, because that is the first map for these rounds. And, oh, wait, what? Exit. Okay, apparently something went wrong. Never mind, we are going to be back in a moment once that's up. Okay, if anyone who's watching the stream is okay, yeah, they would uh, didn't do a proper start. Okay, if anyone's watching the stream is actually wanting to spec the games, make sure to jump into spectator slot right away. Don't go into Don't just jump into the Don't jump into the game and be in one of the teams. Although I don't think the people who are jumping into the teams are actually in the game. Anyway, now the game is starting properly. Players are the right teams, everything's set up, no one's joining in. And this, this should be quite interesting. This should be a fairly even match. And the last couple of matches were... Actually, the last one was fairly even, if a little bit long in the tooth. But this will be even and probably fairly interesting as well. Although, we'll see. Cuba and Eternal Rookie over the east side of the map. Looks like... Well, Spiderman convinced that we need air. Spiderman does play a lot of mass team games, so that's probably why he's thinking that. You don't actually need air for 2v2. It can help, and on this map, actually, I would say air is a good idea. But it's proven to be not as necessary as it probably is in the large team games. It, it's handy, but the thing is you are sacrificing one player's worth of ground forces for air. Like half of your ground, potential ground army is now air instead. And that's a pretty big difference. It's actually not trivial. And it turns out it really isn't trivial. Looks like Eternal Wookie has those set up. He's not gone for anything yet. Neither player has chosen their factory setup in pre-game. So I think Eternal Wookie is planning on going for Cloakbot Factory. I'm not sure why he's saying, saying Cloak. Yeah, there we go. Going for Cloakbot Factory while Cubay is going for Jumpbot. So Jump and Cloak versus Unsure. Spellman probably. Oh, okay. okay. Spellman's going for Air while Spiderman going for Cloak. And we have a game start. And surprise, surprise. Spiderman goes for Cloak. Spellman goes for Air. Spellman, also known as Howard. Point that out as his other name. Eternal Rookie going for Cloakbot Factory. And Eternal Rookie has no other names. Or I think he's one, but it's basically just Eternal Rookie. Nothing really known. Anyway, Cubay is he's going for Jump Out Factory. And he has a couple of pyros being set up pretty quick. No Freaker early on. He's going kind of aggressive, getting early pyros and a few early glaives coming in from Eternal Rookie. Well, Svelman going for a few swifts. He has a couple out so far and another third in production. Well, Svelman. He gets about five glaives before going for pure economy. Actually, going for some defense and then economy. Over this stage, Cubay and Astron Rookie are slightly ahead economically. They are very slightly ahead. It's not much. I think it's actually. No, it is. No, they are meaningfully ahead. No, it's. it's I don't know. That looks like an error. That's like a good round error. Yes, yeah, Fireman, Svelman. Okay, they're even now. So, we're the first matchup. We do have. Turn on Rookie and Cubay. Just gonna. We do have Eternal Rookie and Cubay, I'm sorry, Eternal Rookie and Spireman about to clash, but Spireman actually bypasses Eternal Rookie's force and gets into his base. Load is just finishing, but not in the right spot. Eternal Rookie's commander not upgraded, and down goes a metal extractor. Cubay doesn't really have the units to save this. Eternal Rookie moving his commander in place, but it doesn't matter, that place is moved. Spireman moving along the north side. He will run into the Lotus, and the Glaives are not going to bother. Just going to retreat from the Lotus, losing a Glaive in the process. Not a big deal at this stage. It's a small deal. Does matter, but he can survive it. Cubay coming with his Pyros. That will tear apart these Glaives. However, Spider-Man not near Cubay's start point, so Cubay's going to have a hard time doing any real counter harass. He's going to be able to get rid of a couple Glaives, but losing a Pyro in the process, and another Pyro goes down soon after to Swifts and the Commander. Not much to really be said about that. 
It's another pyro down. The Inspireman could lose his commander to a second pyro. Oh, or second to, in this case, fourth. Actually, these are puppies. Never mind. Puppy, which just misses a swift, gets back down to the ground. Yeah, a bunch of puppies are going to be killing themselves against the Lotus. I don't think they're even going to get in. No, retreating with the Lotus puppies. However, uh, Eternal Rookie is coming in to counter harass Fail Man. And this is where air becomes a bit of a problem. Although, unfortunately, not hitting the economy as well as he could be. But hitting the factory very well. Gets rid of Spellman's air factory right off. That is huge. Nice shot, Eternal Rookie. Spellman needs to rebuild that air factory. Slowing down the air production and giving Cubay and Eternal Rookie time to build up more. Cubay is getting a stronger economy at the same time behind this. And Eternal Rookie as well getting a strong economy behind this. Both players expanding while they attack as they should. Very well done. Like to see that. Cubay still trying to harass along the south side, but not going to do too much. He is over getting harassed along the south side of his own base, but he's going to lose one medley structure, and that's about it. Pyro is coming in with defender support. There go the glaives. One metal extractor down. Not a bad harassment, if more for the fact that they are not even. QB is still ahead. QB and Eternal Rookie are ahead militarily and economically. Spellman, 45 seconds left in this factory. Still building that up. And really, it's just a matter of... Spiderman has to do a lot of defense now. This is what I mean. When you don't have that much ground force, it just becomes hard to respond. Having an air player is a risk in 2v2. It might be a matter of course in 8v8, but in 2v2, it's a risk. It's not something you just do. At least in practice, it's, as we've seen, in practice, it's not something you just do. It is, however, something that is still fairly common, but like I said, it's it's a risk, and it did not has not so far paid off. It may work. I think at this stage it'll work despite itself. Oh, nice! Tick goes off! Nice, I think, I don't know if that was an intentional bait by Eternal Rookie, but he did put himself in a great spot. Stunning out that Lotus, allowing his forces to get in. Well done there, and Cubane Eternal Rookie coming in, tearing apart the Klogibot factory. And pretty much everything in Spider-Man's base, and that is it. So yeah, Air Start did not work at all. The Air Factory has just been rebuilt. No, no, not even. The Air Factory hasn't even been rebuilt. That is game one. Wow. I just realized I forgot to reset the wind counter. I apologize. Oh, no, I did reset the wind counter. Wait, wait what? I... Oh, okay. That's weird. Sorry about that. Don't know why the wind counter didn't reset. And the game closed. But, yeah, that was odd. Anyway, well done there to... Cuban and Eternal Rookie, very nice first match. Very, very nice. He showed that Aerostar is not necessary and is a risk. I'd like to see that. <laughs> and we're going to be going to Game 2 immediately on Desert Needle. This will... Oh, never mind. We're going to Titan Duel. <laughs> so, either way, vehicle heavy. Though Actually, Desert Needle is less vehicle heavy than Titan Duel. Titan Duel, we're going to see probably... Light Vehicle Heavy Tank versus Light Vehicle Air, I'm guessing. Spellman might go for Air again. This map is a bit less risky when it comes to that sort of thing. You have a bit more room to defend, or a bit less space to have to defend. So you can get away with it to a greater extent than you can with with Paradise. Not because Paradise doesn't have the same box set up. I mean, you just defend around this. Make You're defending a corner. It's a lot easier to work with than defending an entire side. So the Spireman. Oops, wind counter's wrong. So Spireman and Spellman are down one game. Cube Eternal Rookie won game one, and now they are going to be trying to take game two. And really, Eternal Rookie did a lot of the work. I mean, Cube did some decent work. He had a good support base. But Eternal Rookie, man, he did the harassment. He actually did the Glaive harassment, then ended up winning. Especially that one thing with the tick on the Lotuses. That helped a lot. I mean, he probably would have killed the Lotus anyway, but still. Stunned it out, got, gone in closer, gone in sooner. So it was Fireman going for light vehicles. And it looks like Spellman's probably going to go maybe gunship but not air. Cubay going for tanks. Eternal Loki, not sure what's going to go. Oh, Eternal Loki's going for light vehicles. Cubay going for heavy tanks. 
And Spellman going for air once again. What? Okay. So it looks like they're going air and Spider-Man and Spellman expect air as their counter. But that's not likely to happen. Ash realized I had the game sound on the entire time. But yeah, Spellman, not sure how it's going to work. Admittedly, at this point, Eternal Wicked does not have any crashers up, but if he gets those, that will be a problem. Though really, it wasn't that wasn't the problem. The problem was just that he harassed well. On this map, it's not going to be as effective. Like This map, it's much easier to defend the air. It's much easier for both players to defend the air. So that sort of split, that divide and conquer harassment that worked well in Conquest of Paradise is going to be less effective here. Not to say it's going to be totally ineffective, it's just going to be less effective. They gotta be careful about that. They can't rely on that to win, but still, they are a game ahead. Keeping an eternal rookie are one game ahead, and I just realized I've had the stream title wrong this entire time. Anyway, we do have nice harassment coming from eternal rookie. Once again, he's gotta remember this: eternal rookie likes harassment and is pretty good at it. He's actually. He's actually doing a decent job. Though the darts are going down to the Swifts, they can't really do much about that. They don't have the range to deal with the Swifts, but still, not bad. Got rid of a Metal Extractor. Keeping Spider-Man a bit behind, and Spider-Man coming in with four Scorchers, trying to kill... Oh, going for a successful dive on Cubase Commander. There's nothing Cubase can do. Loses Commander right away. One and a half minutes into the game, the Commander... One Commander is down. Eternal Rookie's Commander is a bit at risk. Bombard Commander... Or Siege Commander, I mean. Don't see that very often. Probably going to go for Rocket Launcher with that. The Cubay down economically as well, although admittedly, they're even economically. Cubay and Eternal Rookie expanded a bit faster than Spider-Man and Spellman. But, and even then... That being said, though, the destruction happened within their own base, so reclaim is not hard. Like, reclaiming that commander is not going to be a problem, and the Welder going forward to do exactly that. So Cubay at least has a decent amount of reclaim to work with. He can make up for the loss of his economy and still he gets more static economy due to the lack of a commander. And Eternal Rookie was going for Riot Cannon on his Siege Commander. That's... Well, that's still got the same range as normal. I'm not sure... I don't think the Siege Commander actually does any range bonus. I mean, it might. Let's see what the other commanders are that we have. Spellman going for... Sorry, Spider-Man going for Sportcom. Spellman going for Reconcom. Neither of them have upgraded. A little surprising for a team labeled Troll that they aren't going for level 3 commanders and just pushing forward with that. Granted, they are one game behind, but we might see them do that regardless. And Panther coming in. Ooh, Panther coming from Cubay. It's going to go down pretty quickly, but doing what it can to get rid of... Well, at least stun out the air a bit. Not very much. Although, oh, actually, no, it's dealing just amount of damage. It, it dodged that bomber, but it is still... That's going to be not doing too much. Although, it looks like it's going to monopolize the rearm pad for a while. So at least it slows down Spellman's air harassment. He can't attack as quickly as he'd like to. Another Panther coming to get rid of the Scorchers. And the reclaim has been complete. Cubay has finished the reclaim of his commander. Hasn't really got a massive static economy, but still, Cubay and Eternal Rookie are ahead. They remain ahead economically. And Spellman's Spellman... Oh, actually, crashes as well, but yeah, Spider-Man's Spellman... Trying to deal with this, but Eternal Rookie will be able to get rid of the Scorchers that come in with his commander, with the Riot. And Crasher as well for the Swifts and in what potential Ravens that will come in. Or, not potential. They're, they're very real. The Ravens are real. And they are going along the north side, coming in from the north. And the Crashers are actually in a bad spot to deal with this. The Ravens are coming in for the kill, although Eternal Rookie still has can last through this. They're actually coming in to kill off the Panther, not so much to kill off the commander. But now Eternal Wiki is aware that there are crashes coming in. Sorry. The crashes are coming from north because he's aware that the Ravens are coming in. And they are not doing a bad job. Although, admittedly, they didn't ultimately kill the Raven. And all, I think one of them is going to go down. Hard to say. This level are getting trapped in a hole. That is unfortunate, but the Scorcher are about to get knocked out. Oh. No, it's getting knocked out a bit, but not killed. And the leveler not in range to get rid of the Scorcher, unfortunately. Got trapped a bit. That sucks. Getting units trapped like that is a real pain. It's one of the things about Titan Duel that's mildly annoying. That some of these little pits do not abide vehicles along all sides well. And you actually see it's... Yeah, 
it, there's a small little purple patch you can barely see here. That's unpathable. That's unpathable for vehicles. It's small, but it's there. And that's to stop that leveler. Still, his fireman and his man are a bit behind economically, actually behind energy-wise too. Solar panels for Cuban and Eternal Rookie, but wind generators for Spellman and Spellman. And unfortunately, that's 0.6, that's 0.6 energy, which isn't working especially well. So their production is energy bottlenecked at the moment, and they have, they've been countered by units entirely at this point. Not a whole lot that I can really do. I think, oh, Spiderman already throwing in the towel. Seriously? GG? Well, that's, oh yeah, Spellman just, <laughs> Spiderman can be a bit defeatist a lot of the time. So that's not entirely surprising they'd comment like that. However, I gotta be honest, Cuban and Eternal Rookie do have a big advantage right now. They have a decent amount of map control, they have the southwest if they want to take it, they have the center, they don't have the northeast, but actually, no, they do have the northeast. They have control over the northeast, they haven't destroyed it yet. But yeah, Spellman about to lose the northeast whenever Eternal Rookie feels like it. Yeah, Cuban and Eternal Rookie have a lot of map control right now. Unlike Spellman, and Spellman, I'm oh, sorry, Spiderman losing a leveler to three levelers while well, they just plow through the base here. However, Ravens will be coming in to save the day. Killing off the levelers. Crash is trying to deal with that, but not doing enough. The levelers do go down. However, this northeast base, like I said, it's Eternal Rookie has it. He can take it if he wants to. He should take it. He's not doing so, though. I don't know if he's aware of it, actually. Let's see. He is not, in fact, aware that there is a base there. Should still check, because, you know, it happens, but... Yeah, he's not aware there's a base there, and Cube, oh, Spider-Man and Spellman have no knowledge of what's going on other than historical knowledge. They know everything that pretty much everything Cube and Eternal Rookie have built up so far, but they don't know a whole lot beyond that. And Spider-Man looks like his commander in a tight spot. Once the Panther gets in, I think he's going to lose it. Oh, one... Now, a couple more shots, and that commander's going to go stun... Oh, stunned out. Spellman... Sorry, Spider-Man does not lose his commander. Very close, though. A little under 200, oh, a little over 200, 100 health. He's not doing especially well, unfortunately. And like I said, Spellman's only real solace is that nothing has actually killed this expansion yet. Although it soon will. And crashes are going down as well. They're being taken out by the Ravens, the very unit they meant to counter, but... High Alpha. High Alpha fast units do a good job against anti gear. High alpha fast, anti, half fast air units do a good job against anti air, which is kind of why Gunch has a hard time. And Spiderman, <laughs> Spiderman pissing off Spellman. Actually, Spiderman leaving. Spiderman outright leaving the game, leaving Spellman on his own. So we're into a two v one situation. Well, at least Spellman has the right attitude, if nothing else. So Spellman going to be pushing forward, getting a few glaze forward, but it's going to be tough. However, Eternal Rookie has been set up more for anti-air than anti-ground. So with the right positioning and the right set of units, Spellman might actually have a chance here. It's tough, though. Spiderman did lose his commander. Spellman has not. I'm not sure where it is offhand, but yeah, there it is. Spellman's commander is just fine. Shotgun on a recon com. Well, then it's more for construction. And Eternal Rookie's commander is under a bit of threat, but not much. It does have a ride cannon, so it's basically a leveler on legs. However, that being said, ooh, oh, two shots. He needed the three. Lost one under the hacksaw before it dropped. So that commander just barely alive, but another, oh, the Raven is going to try to come in. And the hacksaw just out of range. Eternal Rookie's commander goes down. Taking out the bomber at the same time, but still, Eternal Rookie's commander has gone down. And Spellman actually has a even economy. He's even on economy to Cuban and Eternal Rookie. The problem, however, is control. It's just hard to control two players' worth of armies against two players. Even if you actually have two players' worth of armies. Especially given that he does have less map control than QB and Internal Rookie. Though, the south side's kind of weak. He could break through it if he breaks through the static defenses. And he's able to break through the welders. All the welders going down. QB losing all of his welders. This is going to be tricky. So, yes, yeah, this is 2v1. 2v1 for Spellman versus QB and Internal Rookie. Because Fireman gave up. Outright gave up. I mean, that's just, that's rude, honestly. I guess nothing more can really be expected by some, by, I would say by a troll, but then again, Spellman, despite his name, despite his clan, he is going all out. He is not doing, he is taking this seriously. 
And he is actually ooh, countering the counter. Turn Wookie did spot the Northeast base, but Fail Man moving in to protect it. Well done, he'll need to rebuild a bit, but he's got the resources to do that. However, he's probably taken metal extractors along the way. And consolidating, just pushing forward, building up out. Levelers are being built up, however, and that's a problem for the Glaives. There are, however, a bunch of Glaives in position for a raid. This would be a very nice raid. If Spell, Spell Man attacks with this, he'll lose three Glaives. Oh, now is bad time, though. Leveler came in, but he had a very small window. Those Glaives would have done the trick. However, Spell Man does have a commander that can get rid of these Levelers. He's got to be careful, though. One last level is going to be a bit of a trick to get rid of, but he should be able to pull it off. Yeah, he kites it well enough. Nice kiting, actually. And Raven comes in to finish off the leveler, so Spellman's commander is still up. Spellman doing a pretty good job keeping up. Although, unfortunately, the leveler does get the glaives. They lost that chance to harass, and they will be able to take out this metal extractor. They will take out the metal extractor. Good. So, well, good for Spellman. He is staying on top of some of the cube. Cubase get a metal extractors here and there and getting reclaim around the map. Although Middle East Failman with reclaim is ahead economically compared to the other two. Compared to his opponents. Oh, and Scuzzy pointing out that all games that Spider-Man leaves are won. Kind of a weird thing to say. It's kind of unfortunate, but yeah. Looks like Spellman actually is harassing nicely. He is getting through, just taking out what he can of Turn Wiki and Cubase economies. That's the big thing to do. Get their economy down so that you don't have as much of an army to deal with later on. I mean, right now, Spellman actually has a much larger army than Cubay or Eternal Rookie. But just, the control becomes a little bit trickier. But if you just get rid of your opponent's control, especially if you manage to nail one of your opponents entirely, or at least destroy their economy completely, then at least they don't have the units to deal with. So they aren't really taking advantage of their control. They don't have enough units for the control to make a difference. And a decent raid coming in, but unfortunately not. Once it got into the defender range, it was done. Going around would have been a good idea, but even then that would have been kind of risky. So there's a lot of glaives lost, but still, at the same time, Spellman is moving in along the center, pushing out, forcing Cube out of his territory. And Spellman at this point has pretty much taken the northwest corner of the map, like north entire northwest you draw a triangle, basically along here, the diagonal. Cube is still invading a bit. Actually, this isn't quite solidly Spellman's territory yet. He needs to work a bit more to get this, but with the area he is able to just assert his dominance over here. Oh, not quite. Oh, no, that goes down to ground. That Raven goes down to the Panthers. That is unfortunate. However, Spellman getting damaged a bit by some Scorchers, but he is gonna, well, run away, actually. Gonna jump into the water, avoid getting killed. And at the same time, Sides coming in. Not the best, oh, two Sides. Not the best use of Sides. Attacking the Metal Extractors would've been a better option. Like attack the metal extractors or hit the caretakers directly, actually. It's pretty open back in the base. Jumping back here, it looks like no further sides being produced. Mostly Rocco's, which is a good choice, as well as Levelers and Leveler, Mason, and Ravager. Not a bad mix. Yeah, the Rocco's will be doing decent well against the Panthers, as will the Levelers. Actually, no, the Ravagers is what you want, not the Levelers so much. And Ravagers are over pushing through the center, but getting surrounded by Scorchers. And that's where you want the levelers. Get rid of the scorchers for you. Cube still pushing out, but Spellman holding his own. And his Rocco's, it's really a matter of positioning. Really a matter of putting his the right units in the right spot. Though getting rid of the Panthers with Rocco's won't be especially difficult. But yeah, just getting rid of Panthers is kind of tricky. It doesn't really matter what you use. Still, Spellman able to tear apart Cube's defense line. All of Cubay's static defenses have gone down that he was building up. So Cubay has lost control over... Actually, where's the southwest? In fact, the southwest corner is vulnerable. Once these Panthers go down, Spellman pretty much has map control over the northwest side of the map. We're going to get to game three, I think. I think Spellman has this game. He's taken a lot of map control. He's taken a lot of economy. And at this point, there aren't enough units that Cubay and Eternal Rookie have together to really make a control advantage. Spellman's good enough as controlling his units that the armies just aren't big enough for that to be overwhelmed. So at this point, Spellman just moving out. If he gets rid of the southwest base, I think that'll be game. I think then Cuban and Trollwork will realize this game, but at this point it is already game. The Panthers doing a great job defending and keeping it keeping Spellman honest, but even then a couple more ravens come in and take that out. That's gonna be game. 
And it looks like Reaper's coming in and nothing coming in for Eternal Ricky. Is he fact switching? No, Eternal Ricky's not building anything. I think he's forgotten to build stuff. Gonna try to get rid of Spellman's commander, which can be tricky. There's water right there. Spellman gonna jump into it. As he did last time. Not gonna lose the commander, and these scorchers are gonna go down to the Zeus's. In the center of the map, we have Cube panthering it up. Those Panthers doing a great job, but Cube still not doing especially well overall. The Panthers, despite despite their power, are not enough to win the game here. So Cube looks like he is pretty much holding it together. Eternal Rookie can't really raid, and he's trying to. He's doing what he as best he can with the Scorcher, but that's about to go down to these Zeus's. Just as soon as they fire, oh, oh, miss. Never mind. The Zeus's don't quite kill it. But still, all it can do is escape. Spellman has control over this area, and he's going to take advantage of it right away. Immediately going in the southwest with a few Rockos and Rockos and Ravages. Small force going in the southwest. The rest of it just attacking straight into the main base. With enough units, this should be fine. This should work out. The Panthers are the big problem. The Reaper, not so much. The Reaper's fairly slow. It's As long as it's being kited, it'll be fine. It is very powerful. No doubt about that. It, it has a powerful couple shells. But just sheer numbers, it's not going to be enough. That, that Reaper won't be able to kill this. The Panther's support might turn it around. But on its own, no. The Reaper will not be able to deal with this. It's going to try its hardest. And it's going to fail valiantly. Okay, now the Panthers are taking a lot of damage too. So there's really not much to be said about this. Besides, well done, Spellman. Spiderman may have left, but Spellman, he he had the right attitude to play. He turned that around. It was a losing situation. It was, I mean, losing. Okay, okay kind of was losing. I mean, Cube Banishment Rookie had something of an advantage, but definitely wasn't a lost situation, that's for sure. Certainly was not a lost cause. Spellman is going to be winning for game three. Unfortunately, well, Spider-Man might go back in, but I don't know if, I don't know, does Spider-Man even want Spider-Man at this point? He might, I don't know, but that was still kind of rude. And the Reaper, one shot away from going down, or just about, there are welders in place, and a Banisher coming up to try to help out. The QB holding very well. He is holding the line well, but I just point out, no Copperheads. A couple of Ravens come in, drop down. The Reaper, however, has been fully repaired. Those welders are doing a good job, but the weak spot at this point now is Eternal Rookie, and Spellman knows it, taking advantage of that to tear apart Eternal Rookie's economy and tear apart everything Eternal Rookie has. And this is pretty much going to be it. Oh yeah, that's what it is, is that Spider-Man will always, always, always rage quit when his commander dies, or pretty much always rage quit when his commander dies. I don't know why he does that, because commander loss is not loss of the game. 0k doesn't do that. Most TA based games do. 0k is not one of them. Okay. And now Spellman going for a heavy tank factory. I'm not sure why Spellman's pausing, but yeah, he's going for a heavy tank factory. At this point, the game is over, but I think he's just going to try to match heavy tank with heavy tank. He's got 60 metal income, too. My goodness. He is, he is flooded in money. Wow. I mean, Spider-Man might play in game three. You realize that Spellman can win a game one versus two. Because, yeah, he's basically outnumbered Cube and Eternal Rookie one on two. The only way I can put it. And at this point, it's just... This is the end game. This is just... Cube... Cube trying to win by attrition, but it's not going to work out. The Banisher getting stunned out and killed. And the Reaper is going to... Oh, no, a second Banisher. Reaper's going to follow soon after, though. That's around here somewhere. Or is it? Yeah, it is. It's over here. Not even in combat. But these Zeus's are retreating. Still, Spellman moving over from the center through the center diagonal. We'll be able to take out the Reaper. And down goes another metal extractor. I mean, this is 60 metal income compared to 15. There's nothing more to be said about it. Spellman is outnumbering Cube and Eternal Rookie. And that's all there is to it. He turned it around. It was just really was a matter of pushing off those defenders. Sorry, pushing off those. But yeah, the defenders, the lotuses, and pushing off the panthers. Once he did that, it was game. Really, that's all it really needed to do. I mean, it's not like Cuban and Wiki were behind too much, but it's just 
good surround use of units, and ultimately getting rid of the force of the cube and Eternal Key had sent. I think if Eternal Key had attacked here sooner, it would have probably sealed it more. Sailman would have had less resources to work with, rather than going into the center and attacking directly from that, which gave Sailman stuff to work with, and also probably Reefing to work with, and ultimately also lost units that didn't need to die. But yeah, at this stage, Sailman just pushing in. That's game. That is everything. We're moving on to game three. Once this is officially winning. But yeah. That is going to be it. Spellman slowly but surely turned it around. And that is... That is going to be it. So, Kyube, now losing all his welders. Spellman, losing, just taking everything, not losing anything. Turning the game around after losing his teammate, and that's the story. That's the whole story. And that is going to be game. So, we will have game three, which will be on Kyube Eternal Rookie's choice of map. I don't know if Spiderman is going to get back in the game, and there we go. Kyube Eternal Rookie, surrender! They're calling it. And we're going to move on to game three. Once they actually do call it. I mean, once QB decides to call it. And there we go. That is game. I right, sit down. So we're moving on to game three. Which will be between the same players. Though I don't know if Spider-Man's going to be... Is Spider-Man going to be here? Is he going to play? I don't know. We'll soon find out. And also, I... Th I don't know if there's any change to... Let's see, is there any change to what's going on for... Yes, there is! So, Skazi and Black Duchy won against Sigur and Ral... No, I think Sigur and Ral have apparently forfeited. Or maybe they lost one and then forfeited. That's rather anticlimactic. Oh well, Skazi and Black Duchy are going to be fighting the winner of this set. And it's kind of hard to say who that's going to be. What's, what's in here? But yeah, Skazi and Black Duchy. They won against Sigur and Ral up. Either forfeit or just 1-1 one, one and that's it. So we're moving on to game 3 of Group C. And then the winner of that will be in the semifinals against Skazi and Black Duchy. I'm not sure what's going on. Wait, what? What the heck? What's going on? Okay, they're moving rooms apparently. Okay, we are into a different room. I apologize, just a bit of weird organizational stuff to work out. But yeah, so it's going to be... And yeah, he... pointing out that 1v2 with first fail man, while he clearly can play 1v2, that was after the game had started out and both players were setting up. Setting up with two commanders as one player is hard to do. We saw Ivory King try it in the very first 2v2 tournament in the bronze match, and that didn't work especially well. That did not work that well, so I don't think that's going to necessarily be where it's going to go. I think Spider-Man is going to play. I think Spider-Man, while he might be pissed off, yeah, Spider-Man and Spider-Man are going to start out together. Spider-Man alone might finish it. We'll see. I don't know. But anyway, we are... Okay, there are some issues with spectating, people not being spec properly. Why is this guy here? Don't... Okay, there we go. Apologize, there are some issues with spectators. People keep jumping into the game. Because there's no tournament room for some reason. Okay, Ralhot pointing out he did in fact forfeit the game. That's what happened. Not sure if there was any match so far, but yeah, Sigur and Ralhot did ultimately forfeit. So I guess it was a good thing I casted the only game that actually happened. All right, we are going to get started with the second match. It's going to be on Indonesia. No, never mind. Never mind. We're going to actually have them choose a map. Indonesia was automatically picked. And we are going to be playing on Drab. Actually, or, or no, not, never mind. QB wants to play on Drab. That's not going to happen, though, apparently. 
I guess it's a little silly. I don't recall it being that silly, but maybe I'm remembering wrong. Okay, we are in fact going to Altair Crossing. I guess they just want to finish this quickly, want to get through game three as quickly as possible. Which app? Which will be definitely something that well, will likely happen on LTR Crossing. Once that's started, at least. Uh, Anakin pointing out, yeah, 1v2, he could rush, Spellman could rush things in 1v2, that's true. However, it, there's still a bit of a control issue. That's sort of the problem, is control is problematic, and apparently Ralph did play one game. Ralph and Skigger did play one game against Scuzzy and Black Digi got wrecked and decided to forfeit. Well, Spellman, Spiderman, game has not... Wait, has game started? Yes, game has started. Okay. Oh, wait, no, it hasn't. What am I think? Has it? Ah, okay, there we go. Game is starting pretty soon, so we'll get to that once it's actually in. So yeah, this will be interesting. Game three. Game three and Altair Crossing. An Altair Crossing, which will be... Yeah, I said one and one. Spellman and Spiderman starting on the west side of the map. Cuban and Eternal Wiki starting on the east side of the map. This is a 1v1 map, by the way, so I don't anticipate that it's going to last that long. It could be interesting, but it's going to be very, very quick. And Spellman goading Spiderman to just reserve, resign from the start so that Spellman can actually win the game. On his own. We'll see, but yeah, Spellman might be going for air again. I mean, he's going for air every game, but this is a map where air is not going to work out especially well. Turn Wiki setting up. Cuber at the center of the map. Turn Wiki at the north. Spellman and Spider-Man not yet set up. We'll see where they go, but so far, nothing. Cubic going for Shieldbot Factory. A little interesting. And Rookie going for Killbot, that's more usual. The Shieldbot Center. Shieldbot Center is not unusual. Might see a lot of dirt bags actually be sent out right off the bat, like five dirt bags, just to block off the factories. That wouldn't surprise me. I don't think Cubic has mentioned anything about that, but nope. And Spaleman going for Aeris, Fireman going for Jump Bots. Actually, this map makes sense. There's a lot of cliffs on this map. It's not bot, un bot unpathable, but I think these cliffs are? Yeah, these cliffs are bot unpathable, but there are ramps to get up there. So Jump Bots will have a bit of an advantage getting up and down. Not that it's impossible for other bots to get up and down, but it is impossible on some of these ridges. It's just there exist ramps to get up here. So Jump Bot has a bit more flexibility. Eternal Ricky going on the north side, and been spotted up by Spellman's Swift. Spellman very quickly scouts out everything that Cubay and Eternal Ricky are up to. And Cubay actually going for it. No, Heavy Convict. What am I thinking, Dirtbag? Yes, that's an old style of play. Heavy Convict instead for Reclaim, which is exactly right. Exactly what we should do. And we have game audio. I apologize. I keep forgetting to put that on quickly. I really should be. Anyway. Spider-Man moving with a couple pyros from the south. So QB is going to have a very difficult time. He's got one Lotus. That's about it. Well, Spider-Man does have... He has a couple of Lotuses. Glaive can come in. Pyro is coming in. Bandits are moving in to deal with the pyros. QB's commander as well. QB's commander has a beam laser. Beam laser only. Support com. Forces away those pyros and... Glaive support from Eternal Wiki as well, with Eternal Wiki not going for as much harassment as I'm sure he'd like to. We've seen before Eternal Wiki loves his harassment. And he absolutely loves harassment. Not going for it yet, though. He's going for Grem Gremlin. Oh, of course, he would go for Gremlin. He would want to get rid of the Ravens and the Swifts. Kyube, ooh, two shots left to lose his commander. Getting it repaired, though, so he doesn't lose it. Still has a lot to repair, and Pyro's moving in. They will die. They will die a horrible death in their own fire, and Cubase Commander not going to go down in the process. So it's going to try a Raven, however, if that comes in. I don't see... No, Raven's not in yet. Raven's doing a good job getting rid of the Swifts, too. But yeah, Raven would do a lot here, and Cubase Commander getting shielded out by the... Okay, it's getting shielded by the Convicts and by the Felon. Although, Ravens will dive under shields, but at this 
at this stage, I think, I think that Raven's actually going to do it. It's hard to say. Is it going to do it? It's, it's certainly trying, and it does do it. The Raven goes down in the process, but Cubase Commander is dead. However, I don't know, that's slightly behind economically. Yeah, that, that's half of his economy that goes down right there. Another Power Hover goes down. That was stunned, but... Eternal Rookie needs to basically, and QBA as well, need to counter-raid hard. That's what they need to do. They need to counter-raid as hard as they can. And looks like Spider-Man going over to the south as... Oh, unless you're going over to the north and south. Well... Oh, well... Raven only gets one of the Glaze, which isn't bad. Spellman does have his commander, recon commander up. And the puppies will get rid of the Glaze if they're not careful. Well, they will get rid of the Glaze if the Glaze get close to them. There's nothing to be said about that other than... They're gonna die. However, Felon Convict in the center, it's a bit risky. Cubay likes to do his Felon Convict balls, but that's not really a ball. That's just one Felon, one Convict. And some Gremlin support for air. Cubay using a rock to get himself somewhat more into the game, getting some Vandals as well for the anti-air, but yeah. Needs to reclaim to get him, his economy back up. Also should get a Metal Extractor. And reclaim his commander. Actually, that's a big one. But here comes Eternal Wookiee alongside Cubay. Trying to get rid of the jump bot factory, a little bit tough. The felon goes down. The glaze are still up, and the gremlins are also up. Pyro is not gonna be built. The jump bot factory about to go down, and oh, is it gonna go down? Come on, kill it, kill it. 74 health. It can die. There we go. The jump bot factory goes down. Spiderman loses the jump bot factory. That is a big loss. Though admittedly, Spiderman does still have a couple pyros around the map, and he has his commander, of course, which has been upgraded, like particle beam. And nano lathe on support com, so 20, well, 19, no, 17 build power and light particle beam. Not a bad mix. However, his pyros are going to go down shortly. Or no, maybe not. No, no, maybe not. Maybe not. Eternal Wookie still not quite lost that. Or hasn't quite taken it. Oh, never mind. Ticked out a pyro, and now it's going to go down. So, Spider Man losing his army, rebuilding the jump bot factory, but it's going to take a little while. It's going to take him about 20 seconds to get that fully rebuilt. So at this stage, Cuban and Eternal Rookie can just outbuild for ground forces. Do need to reclaim though, and now, now he's going. Now Cuban is reclaiming the center here. So he can get enough production just for his one factory. And a lot of Vandals too, just to get rid of, I don't know, Vandals? They have great HP for cost, but not great damage for cost, so you need to get a lot of Vandals to get rid of forces quickly. Get rid of the enemy air force quickly. Should point out that Eternal Rookie still has his commander in play. Has not died yet. I should also point out that the sun is starting to rise. Not quite though, it's just, it's dawn. But yeah, it's getting there. We're getting into almost morning. And Turn Wiki, our disarming the commander and about to kill it off with ravens. Not quite able to do so. He disarmed one of his own ravens, which does save Turn Wiki's commander just barely, but does save it. At least briefly. That raven does not go down, though. That Raven not quite dead yet. Able to get back to base. Gonna take a little longer for a Spellman to go for a second round, but Eternal Wiki has not yet repaired his commander. His commander actually... Is it healing up? Yeah, it's healing up. It's actually... It's not got auto repair, but it's healing up on its own. Auto repair module, I mean. And one of the Ravens does go down to the Vandals. However, the Thunderbird... Able to disarm all the Vandals, and they are gonna go down soon after. Thanks to being disarmed. Eternal Wiki coming in. Trying to deal with this, and Spellman gets ticked out by... Well, briefly gets ticked out. Still, his commander not in much threat. Oh! However, Eternal Rookie just lost his. Eternal Rookie and Cubay lost their commanders, and I think Spellman and Spiderman might turn this around. Spiderman does have his factory back up. Cubay and Eternal Rookie are behind economically. That's where the commander really counts. Actually, on this, a, small, a map this small commander counts for attacks. Commander just counts for a lot. That's the thing. It just, it really does count for a lot. Our Eternal Rookie is going to try to get rid of Spellman's Commander. Not going to work out thanks to that shotgun. Even with the tick support, not a bad move there. The way you put the tick in, I mean, it was going around the hill. Kind of hard to hit before it got too close, but unfortunately, didn't get close enough. And Thunderbird coming back once again for another disarm on these glaives. Got to be careful about this, because that's going to be a problem. However, Pyro in... The Cubase base, the power is gonna. F now it's taking a bit of damage, but it got rid of a metal extractor. Got rid of two metal extractors for Cubase. That's a lot of Cubase economy, though. Admittedly, most of Cubase economy right now 
is in reclaim, so kind of volatile. Yeah, rebuilding more of these metal extractors. Getting more felons, getting felon convict ball once again. See if this works, but I don't know. It's going to be tough. It is an uphill battle, and these pyros are ticked out. There is one pyro assisting it, but if that pyro goes down, the other two pyros are dead. However, yeah, the other two pyros are dead. One of them is dead anyway. The other one, not so much. It, oh, it's dead too. Both of them have died, and the last pyro is going to go down. Three pyros for the cost of six glaives and a tick. Good trade. General Rookie still behind economically. That's a problem. That economic disadvantage... That means even trades are actually a loss, unfortunately. And for Cuban moving forward, unfortunately moving into Eternal Wiki's commander. Fortunately, he has a lot of shield energy to work with. And Svelman's commander! Sorry, not Eternal Wiki's commander. Svelman. Svelman's commander does go down. Wow. Okay. So it's a bit more even now. However, if he kills off Svelman's factory, or just kills the air units, that will really make the difference, I think. And a Thunderbird coming in, trying to stun out, stuns out one of the felons. Not the other one, but the other felon not near the ball. And the convicts are going to be just bombed out. No, never mind. Everything going for the felon. And the felon does die. Unfortunately, those, both those felons do die. So despite losing his commander, Svelman is still in the game quite convincingly. If he loses the factory and the Arianist, though, that's the problem. But Vandals, as I mentioned before, do not have very good attack damage. Not for cost. You need a lot of Vandals to take out an Air Force. They will last for a while, they'll take a lot of damage, but you need a lot of them to actually destroy quickly. And Spireman has now taken the south side of the map. He's in a very good spot. Even if Spireman were to go down, Spireman would still be an uphill struggle to fight, to kill. And a Razor being built up just to get rid of as much of Spireman's air force as he can. Looks like Cubay is trying to rebuild along this side of the map, along the north center. He managed to pull that off. That will be very effective. It oh. Scuttle? Crap, I missed that coming in. So scuttled out a lot of these convicts. Still enough of them to build up, or to reclaim, I should say, for building up in the factory. Although Kyube, he needs to get caretakers in his factory if he wants to actually make that effective. Eternal Rookie does have a caretaker at his factory. But yeah, Kyube, I don't... I don't think the... I don't know if the metal's shared. It might be. I think metal actually is shared. So at the very least, he is providing Eternal Rookie with a bunch of metal. Where he was. Not anymore. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is... Well, it does actually matter. I don't know what it is offhand. I think it's on communism mode. Anyway, that or share excess. At any rate... As far as I just have map control entirely. If Cuban and Eternal Rookie punch through the right point, I think either punching through like around here and hitting this, or just destroying Svelman and taking the entire north side, that would probably do it. Excuse me for a second. <coughs> that would probably do it. War zone active. And Cuba, however, sorry, Eternal Rookie, however, is losing the north southeast side of the map. But they are going to, I think they're going to take out Svelman. They're going for it. Vandal's taking care of most of this. If the air factory goes down, those planes are as good as dead. They're not rearmed. They're not repaired. That airplane factory is down. Air factory's down. Most of the areas are not able to repair or rearm. And Spellman has no constructors as well. Spiderman needs to donate one. However, Spiderman did do some damage to Cuba, but not very much. Those Lotuses, they are getting their money's worth. And Cuba. Well, let's push Cuba. Eternal Rookie more so. Doing a good job with the Zeus's. <laughs> I was gonna be curious if he's gonna go for a crab morph. But yeah, that Zeus should be repaired because it's a good idea to repair units. They're kind of expensive. And there we go. We do have a con given to Spellman, getting a caretaker. Looks like he's going for a Cloaky Bot factory. Switching over to Cloaky. But yeah, the north side has been taken for Cuba and Eternal Rookie. Spellman loses that entire north side. This is not going especially well for them. So Cuba and Eternal Rookie are not that far ahead. They've taken the north side. But it's more that brings them back into the game. That makes them no longer quite so behind. Still kind of tricky though. It looks like Eternal Wookiee wants to make sure there's nothing over to the southeast. And it's going to be harassing over to the south center, which is not going to work out. These glaives are going to die, but at least they will get valuable information about what Spireman is up to. 
And Spellman, he does have... Uh, he's got a bit that's distracting Cubase forces, but mostly it's distracting his Lotuses. So not really anything meaningful. Zeus, the veteran Zeus has been repaired. Moving out once again, I think Eternal Wiki might be planning on going for a crab, actually. That wouldn't surprise me, but he might just go for it. So Cubay does have a felon. He's got that up again. He's got another felon ball over to the south. He'll be attacking this directly. He did lose the glaive. Or Eternal Wiki did lose the glaives. But like I said, got valuable information about what's over here to the south. Mostly don't attack it head on. Although, to be perfectly honest, Spider-Man's built up a lot of defenses. A lot of stack defenses around the map. Let's counter to say don't attack it head on because, well, what else is he going to do? And Spellman still has these metal tractors over to the northwest. Thanks to the Lotus, but once that goes down, I mean, it's just these are dead, but they're still working right now. That being said, Spellman now getting his Cloaky Bots. He has his Cloakies. He's moving forward with the Glaives, trying to get rid of the Zeuses. And one of the Zeus, the Zeus does have enough veterancy for Crab. I don't know if it's going to go for Crab, though. Funny if it did, but I don't know. Anyway, Felon is able to get rid of a Stinger. Nicely done. Get rid of a Lotus too. So actually attacking it head on wasn't a terrible idea. He can go around the north side, and then from there he will be able to just kill everything. But we'll see. We shall see soon enough. And Eternal Rookie is... Sorry, Cube has taken out Sailman's base, except for this really northwest metal extractor that I don't think he's aware of. Nope, not at all aware of it. No surprises there, then. And Pyro coming into the northeast. Wow, getting a lot of Eternal Wiki's forces. All of them. What? All I think the Kogibot Factory is about to go down, too. Zeus doing what it can, but that Kogibot Factory is doomed. Or just about... Oh, no. That Kogibot Factory just got saved. It's close, though, and a lot of economy was destroyed. Eternal Rookie lost a lot of his economy. But his fireman looks like he's about to lose his commander. Once the shield ball regenerates, Kyube is going to move in and... As a contender with the Stardust. Actually, it's going to be a big problem. But if he hits the commander, the commander doesn't have very much going for it for health. And down goes the Stardust. Splashing a bit on the commander. And now the commander is not... Is it going to go down? It's... It's... Maybe going to go down? There it goes! Fireman's commander goes down. And now Fireman's likely to resign. Maybe. I don't know. He's got a sumo halfway produced. I don't think he's quite going to resign yet. But I got to say, this is a bit risky. At this point, Cubay and Eternal Wiki are rebuilding their forces well, and actually they've taken a lot of map control, having taken out the south. Cubay and Eternal, Eternal Wiki about to turn this around. That air start once again failed. <laughs> Detrino in the chat. It's not over yet. Spiderman can still quit. Well, no, he's not going to quit. He's going to stay in the game. He's going to be polite this time around. Or either that or he realizes that it doesn't really matter what happens if he stays or not. Although, yeah, from this stage it's going to be really tough. Really not much can be done. I mean, Svelman just losing, using his ravens, losing them, to scout out, see what's being done, and realizing Cuban and Eternal Rookie have taken the map. Very nice comeback for Game 3. Certainly an exciting Game 3. Good, good comeback, and we will be moving on after that, I guess, to the semifinals, or maybe another match. I'm not sure if Google Frog, his... The match he was in is going to be played out. Sumo almost done. 95% done. They're going to see if they can break out with that. I don't think so, but they might. However, Cuban and Eternal Rookie have taken advantage of the map control to take a massive economic lead, which is huge. Like that massive economic lead, that's basically going to make up for the fact that there's a Sumo bearing down on them. Not really going to count for much. It will get rid of the Felon, though. Actually, the Felon's not going to have an easy time with this. Deals, well, 700 damage per second. Yeah, that's not much. Against 12,000 health, when that's destroying your shields, that sumo is going to be doing pretty well. But even then, it's going to take a decent amount of damage. It's, wow, actually already down to half health. Mostly from the defenders, but yeah, the felons as well. Actually, you know what? Yeah, the felons are going to work out. They're losing all the shields, but that was only a sumo. And there it goes. Fireman's quit. Turn around games, Veil Man, Fireman has just quit. Actually, wow, that was a tick. Nicely placed tick, too. The sumo does go down, unfortunately, before it can take advantage of the nicely placed tick. Yeah, we're now once again into a one-on-two situation. But Spellman throws in the towel. That is 
game that is match. We have our winner, Cube and Eternal Rookie, have won the game. I'm going to put this actually in the game. Cube and Eternal Rookie have won the game against Spider Man and Spell Man. Well done. They will move on to the semifinals. Although the stats haven't updated, but yeah, we also report from the matches. And good and sponge, we saw that match. Google Frog Aquinim won against Norm and Kmar. 2 0. Well, Spider-Man, or Cuban and Rookie won 2 1 against Spider-Man and Spellman. And I would like to see all the semifinals, so I guess we're gonna be doing it linearly, but we'll see. So that worked. That worked well for Cube and and Eternal Rookie. Yeah, I don't know what match is going to be next yet. So we're on to semifinals. Not sure what match is going to be next, but once that comes up, we will be back. So stay tuned. <laughs>